Hello. Welcome once again to We Would See Jesus. Uh, today we're talking on the very important subject, following Christ Jesus. And we're going to begin in the book of Matthew. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once, they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. The call to follow Christ Jesus. Now, so here we have the calling of Peter, Andrew, James, and John. A notice that all four of these dropped everything immediately. And it brings us to a very important question. Would you drop everything immediately and follow Christ Jesus if he called you today? So if he calls you today to follow him, will you follow him? You know, I believe that it would, would have been the greatest honor bestowed on any man in the history of mankind to have followed Christ Jesus himself in the flesh, even knowing their end. You see, because Jesus' disciples were persecuted for their faith in him. <clears throat> and I have an overview of how each of the uh, the, the 12 disciples uh, died. So Simon, named Peter, he was crucified upside down. James the Great, mentioned here, also who wrote the book of James, was beheaded. Matthew, who penned these words, wrote the book of Matthew, was burned to death. Jude, who wrote the book of Jude, was axed to death. Andrew was crucified upside down on an X-shaped cross. Philip was crucified. Bartholomew was skinned alive and then beheaded. <laughs> Thomas was impaled by a spear. James, known as the Lesser James, was stoned and then clubbed to death. Simon, the Canaanite, was axed to death. Matthias, he's the one who took the place of the traitor, Judas Iscariot, was crucified. Only John, who wrote the book of John and also the book of Revelation, didn't die a martyr's death. Well, he kind of did. He, they threw him into a a cauldron of boiling oil, but he survived. And then they exiled him to live the rest of his life into uh, in the, uh, the island of Patmos. And that's where he wrote the book of Revelation. So the 12 disciples gave their lives, not because they were enemies of the state, not because they were criminals, because of their faith in Christ Jesus. That was the cost that they had to pay in following Christ Jesus. And today, you know, Christians do desire to follow Christ, although we can't see him face to face. And because of that, we need godly teachers to help show us the way. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul wrote, become followers of me as I also am of Christ. Wow, such a profound scripture verse. And this welcomes a beautiful challenge. It gives the new believer, as well as every follower of Christ, the invitation to examine every aspect of the life of the minister. Basically, he's saying, come into my home and see how I raise my children. See how I treat my spouse. Examine what books I read. Examine what websites I visit. Come examine every aspect of my life. You know, not to say that I'm perfect. However, I'm always pressing towards perfection. And it also gives each follower important instruction. In other words, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. If I ever exit or stop following Christ Jesus, please stop following me. You follow me only as long as I follow Christ Jesus. You know, the best ministers today, they lead by example. They don't simply preach a good message. 
They practice it every moment of every day. Uh, however, not everyone being called by Christ Jesus to follow him will accept his invitation. Here we have in the book of Matthew, uh, Jesus said, For many are called, but few are chosen. The ironic thing is, being called by Christ to follow him, and you accept his invitation, you become the chosen. That's what's ironic about it. If you reject the calling to follow Christ, you will be rejected by him. If you accept his calling and you continue on his path for your life, you will be accepted by him and he will, you will be called one of the chosen. So that's the choice. And it is your choice. He doesn't, God doesn't, he's no respecter of persons. It doesn't like, well, I like you, but I don't like you just because, you know, you, you look funny. You know, none of that. He judges every man by the intention and, and their acts, the intention of their heart and their acts. And if you choose to follow him your entire life, you will be one of the chosen ones. But not everyone accepts Christ's invitation. You know, many are called, but few are chosen. I'm going to go here as Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem. A man came running up to him, knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. And you honor your father and your mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. So this is typically known as the rich young ruler. And it was because he had so much money and so many possessions, he could not imagine his life without those possessions. And Jesus went on and he turned to the, the people that were following him and said, it's going to be very difficult for rich people to enter into the kingdom of heaven because they trust in their riches instead of trusting in God or trusting in me. Um, <clears throat> Jesus called another man to follow him and the man said, uh, Lord, first let me go bury my father. And that hesitation was enough for Christ to reject him. Another man said, I will follow you, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. So the rich young ruler mentioned here, along with these two men, never become became part of the 12 disciples, even though they were called to be part of the 12. And it was because each of them delayed in answering the call. You see, following Christ Jesus is much different than simply following some, someone on social media. It means that you dedicate your entire life to him. That's what following Christ entails. Um, so when Christ follows you, I admonish you to drop everything and follow him immediately because his path leads to eternal life. That's what we have for you today. God bless you all. See you next week.